Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Founders of Teotihuacan, the tile placement game by Board and Dice. This is a one to four player game, meaning there's a solitaire mode and then a two to four competitive game mode where you're gonna be playing as one of the founders of Teotihuacan, one of the greatest cities in Mesoamerica. Your objective is to be an architect and design the city, the Great Pyramid in the center, the robust buildings outside, and then finally the peasantry spaces around it. You're going to be constructing, utilizing different buildings and of course resources as you utilize your die, or I guess not die, I should say tokens, uh, to place your workers down in certain locations to gather different tiles, to gather different locations, and of course to gather unique benefits. So it will provide more planning and industrial aspects to the game. The gameplay is very simple. You're going to be first selecting certain parts to your board and then you're going to be placing them down to get your starting benefits, whether they be resources or unique buildings, and then you're going to be using your tokens or your little uh, discs here to place down. Once you've all placed down, uh, it's going to go through this final phase of cleanup. You'll move this marker down one space until you get to the fourth space of the game, and after you do so, that'll trigger the ending, and whoever has the most points is the winner. Let's go and take a look at the game Founders of Teotihuacan, a tile placement game. So the basic idea of setup for the game is pretty simple. There's a main game board, and then there's your own individual game boards. There's four different colors. You have pink, green, orange, and blue. You're going to set up your different architects in different areas of your board, going clockwise, which is where you're going be building during your turn and they'll always be moving every round um, and you're also going to be placing down one of each of the three different colored tiles the blue the red and the green ones in the middle or central center of your playing board that will give you bonus points if you score certain colors in certain areas based on where you place these as well as bonus resources or tiles depending on where you place them as well. You're going to be stacking these and trying to score bonus points for each of the different tiles of certain colors, the, red, the pink, I should say, the blue, and the green ones in the different areas of the board, but with the regulation that uh, you can only place in the specific area in which you have this little architect. On your turn, you're basically going to be taking a tile or more of these little disc tiles and placing them down onto one of the nine spaces. In the different areas, there are three of them, you're going to either be able to build the resource buildings, uh, the buildings that will allow you to score points, or you can build the foundations, the monuments, the pyramid aspect of Teotihuacan. Of course, if you don't want to do these three aspects, you can do the bottom three in the same categories that will either let you gain additional resources, let you play objective tiles to score you additional points, which you'll keep track of around your player board, and of course, you're going to be able to move across this track here, which will give you victory points and allow you to switch between your objectives if you don't like them or cannot use them. The way you utilize your uh, discs to build buildings is based on power. So there's always going to be a power one to start with, and if you place one onto one of the ones that have not been taken previously, it's going to give you a power one plus the disc that's already there, which is power two. Each of the tiles is going to give you a certain number of power here, and it's going to be based on how many squares. In this case, this is a two power because there's two squares, and this one here is four because there are four squares. And you will be utilizing the power that you have to do what you want based on what you're trying to pick up. And each of them has a cost and resources and a required power. Now, of course, if you play first, you'll have more value or more availability to choose from between the different uh, non-use spaces, giving you additional bonus effects, like being able to build one additional time or utilize the bottom of the board in any area or score you victory points and have an extra power etc etc but if you place on somebody else's space then you're going to be able to get additional power based on the previous number of tiles or discs on that specific space so if there are two already there and you place one that will give you a power of three and you can also choose to use more than one disc at a time you can choose to use two of them which will generate you four in this case one of somebody else's one of the main one and two of yours allowing you to get one of the bigger tiles for placement. Whenever you place a specific tile, it's gonna generate you resources, and it's gonna be based on the color. Like for instance, a yellow one, when you place it on your board, it'll generate gold all the way around it. If you place one of these silver ones, it will generate silver all the way around it. And then of course, bronze will generate you bronze all the way around it. If you are able to, during the game, cover up certain spaces of the area, may, for instance, to cover up these uh, tiki masks that have four in a row, you're going to get victory points over here. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the idea of the game. You'll be placing out your discs, you run out of discs, you're going to be done. Everybody's going to place all of their discs until there are no longer any discs left. You want to refresh the board, refill, move your marker, allowing you to now place your building sites in only the areas in which the character is facing. So if he's on the north side, you'll get to place on the north side, south, 
west and east, etc., etc. Um, and you'll be utilizing the resources on your board in order to purchase the item. Now, most things are going to cost power, and some will cost power and resources. It's just all detailed on the board here. And that's pretty much it. At the end of the game, whoever has the most points, based on how many points they had had previously, plus any additional bonus benefits, is the winner of the game, Founders of Teotihuacan. So, what do I think of the game, Founders of Teotihuacan? Well, Normally, like I usually say in most of my videos, I'm not a puzzler. I'm not very good at them. It's not that I don't play them. I just never seem to win them. However, when there's a nice twist to a puzzler that has kind of mechanisms to allow you to build a machine uh, experience or like uh, some type of foundation that lets you spread out into other things, that's where I can shine. And this game has that added benefit. You are placing down tiles. You are trying to block certain spaces and you are scoring points You based on where you place them at the end of the game, based on if you can cover up certain tiki masks, any objectives that you might be able to solidify and utilize, but... <laughs> That's the puzzle aspect. Uh, the other aspects of the game are resource management, where you place your tiles will generate you resources, which you can then utilize to get certain other pieces. You can utilize objectives. It'll tell you you get five points based on if you're able to do a certain objective, or six points, or nine points. If you have these specific tiles here, you can score this many points, up to a maximum of this many points. So there's a lot of ways you can kind of figure out how to make the best board for yourself that will additionally score you points utilizing resource, resource management. What's also nice about the game too is the fact that this guy moves. Now some people might consider this a negative, and I appreciate that, but I think it's a positive. It's always going to force you to build on one side of the board, and it always changes every round to make you kind of focus on each unique side. You can't simply place on one side and fill the board out going from the top north right uh, to the bottom south uh, west. So you're actually going to have to be building unique spaces in different areas. Additionally, you can score points when you cross over buildings from one side to another, because certain areas in the pyramid are going to score you points going outward now based on where you place. So for instance, if I placed a red one in the middle section here, I'll score points for each red tile I have in each section adjacent to it. Whereas if I place a blue one on the far end corner here, I'm only going to score points for the blue ones over here. A nice little thing too about this is it's got like this pyramid building aspect. Yes, when you place down your first pyramid tiles down, you will be scoring points. You'll be getting whatever benefits provided on them. But in addition to that, you can place another one right on top of those to score even more points for the tile pieces that you have down below in the specific area that's adjacent to it. And I like that as well. This game provides a lot of different facets for what you can do, a lot of different growth. Uh, the game looks complex and challenging. It looks like there's a lot of things to do in the game, but it's actually not so bad. Where your guy is, is where you're going to be place, placing items. What discs you have is how many you can use, and you'll be losing them each round so that you have less and less um, ability to generate uh, actions as the game progresses, but you'll have more resources and less space, so it won't matter too much, and it keeps the game short, which is nice. Placing these guys down, you're never gonna wanna place two of them, in my opinion. You wanna save them so you can use additional actions for each, unless it's the very end of the game and you need to have something specific. Getting the benefits on these boards is really nice, but also utilizing somebody else's power, especially if it's three going to four, is going to be even better. And placement is going to be based on what you choose to do. And you have only nine different areas, the top uh, right, the top left, um, or in your case, the top right and top left, and the middle sections, and then of course the bottom areas. So six different areas with each unique tiles to each service, very specific purpose. And then when it comes to tile placement, you push it on, on, your, on your board. And what's nice about the game too is you can kind of pass turn and let the next player go while you're fiddling around with whatever it is you're doing. Because for the most part, no one's gonna mess with your board. It's kind of like a solitaire based game, except for where placement goes. That's where the strength comes in. That's where you're gonna be able to gather the bonus resources if you're the first person to play there and what you choose to do. Uh, another thing to note too is when placing down these guys, uh, you're gonna get these little tiki masks, which I explained, but you'll get less points for each additional one that gets completed. So if you're the first one, you get seven points. If you're the next player, you get five, and then four, and three, and two. And one player can simply get all of these, well, not all, but up to three of them, if they're able to complete all of their tiki masks of that color. And once these guys run out, that's it, they've run out. Uh, some small little critiques to the game. Uh, one thing here is I guess they give you additional cubes, which is excellent, but sadly the cubes are different colors. I don't really think it matters too much to me, but some people might have annoy uh, might find that to be a slight annoyance, I suppose. Uh, the game doesn't have a beautiful insert to it. You're going to have to get a bunch of baggies and separate all these components so that the setup doesn't take too long. If you have everything separated, the game is quick to set up, but if you put together things, uh, all the different cubes and all the different little tiles, 
it's going to be a, a monstrosity to put together. I would suggest you go on Thingiverse or find some type of uh, place that does the board organizer thing in the box and you should pick one of those up and organize them that way. If not, nothing else, get some rubber bands or get some baggies, whatever you prefer, and make sure that they're separated so that you don't have to go through the ordeal of setting the game up from scratch. The game's quick. It's not actually as long as you might think. I think it actually plays maybe about an hour or so. If you're playing four players, maybe about an hour and a half. The game shortens itself as it progresses. You have more things to do. You have more resources to utilize, but you'll have less space, and that makes for a nice game. You never feel like you're able to complete everything that you want, which is also something I really enjoy about certain games, and this one specifically is a great way for you to go about it because you're like, oh, I wish I had to do this and this and this. It makes you want to play again. It's not a game you're probably going to want to play again right after because this game is kind of a mind boggler. It's going to take a lot of uh, mental power prowess, I suppose, in order for you to get everything you want to do and figure out what you need to do and how you want to place things. There's things you learn throughout the game, like placement and how placement is going to work. I'm not going to explain a lot of the beneficial, like, you know, that's, that's for another YouTuber. But what I will say is that as you play, you're going to start realizing there's like unique little tricks that you can do when placing together bonus resources, bonus victory points, and how you can uh, add here to this is fixate, fixating yourself on certain types of tiki mass to score you points, when it's best to utilize objectives, extra resources, extra tiles and cubes, etc, etc. And I think you kind of get the idea. Overall, this game has a great quality. Uh, everything's nice and thick. All the pieces are basically uh, chits, or I should, wooden cardboard stuff. It's not going to bend on you. It's not going to break. It'll last a long time. The discs are nice as well. Um, the artwork, of course, all of Board and Dice artwork for the covers are beautiful. I really appreciate that. And you do feel like you are founding a city. Um, but mostly the game is going to be revolving around symbols and, of course, little baby building aspects to the original foundation of Teotihuacan. Um, so, it's, it's a solid, uh, solid artwork, style, solid stylization. It's something you're going to expect from a board and dice game with beautiful artwork on the cover and inside of the rule books. The theme of the game works very well. It's very in intertwined, and I enjoyed that aspect as well. And the gameplay is very solid. It's a good choice for you guys who want a thick Euro with an added puzzler. It's something I can get my wife to jump in and play where she normally wouldn't play a Euro style game. It's kind of this type of a thickness, but with that added puzzling benefit, it's something she appreciates. It gives her, her brain an even more you know, churn, I suppose. Uh, but for me, it was able for me to enjoy the game as well because I wasn't just focusing on placing the pieces down where they were meant to go, but I could also focus on the board and my resources and how many re tokens and discs I have to gain certain power to get certain benefits. So it had a nice mesh up there as well. Uh, if you like board and dice games, if you like puzzlers and you like euros, this is one I would strongly suggest you picking up. I enjoyed it quite profusely. I'll be getting myself uh, an insert of some type either on Thingiverse or printing one out myself. But everything else about this game I thoroughly enjoyed, and I think you will too. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Founders of Teotihuacan, a tile laying game by Board and Dice. If you enjoyed this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment. Also go ahead and hit the link in the description where you can go ahead and pick up a game, Founders of Teotihuacan, for yourself to play with you by yourself or up to three other players. You can also check out the website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We have new reviews on there that are reviews that are not mine and of different games. So you can go ahead and take a look at that way in a written form. You can also go ahead and check out our live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, which is currently on Facebook and on Twitch if you're into that kind of stuff. And as always, I thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to building the city of Teotihuacan with you next time. But uh, I, get, I get to win. <laughs>